we're in Iceland today and parked right alongside us is the Norwegian Prima. This is the Harper, it's right next door to where the shuttle bus drops you off, so easy to find. This is a concert hall and it has a free observation area. And if you're wondering why it's so crowded, it's because everyone is looking for free Wi-Fi. There's a great children's play area, but it's got no children in. The good is it's easy to get in, just jump on the shuttle bus and the Icelandic people are warm and wonderful. The bad is that you just won't have enough time here and you've got to get to the Blue Lagoon. The ugly is the price of the drinks. There are three main things to do. We'll take you to all of them and show you a few other things along the way. And it's all walkable apart from the Blue Lagoon. This statue is by the sculptor Elnar Johnson and shows the settler Ingilfa Arneson. And according to the Book of Settlements, he and his crew were the first permanent settlers in Iceland and named the place Reykjavik, which means smoke cove, on account of the billowing steam rising from the area's hot springs. Here in the statue, he's standing by his high seat pillar decorated with the dragon's head, the famous church. Halgren's Church is the largest church in Iceland. It has a 75 meter high tower and you can buy tickets and go up there in an elevator. And from the top, you've got a 360 degree view. There's the church we walk from and there are the cruise ship. It's all walkable if you can manage it. We'll show you the route. Keep walking past the National Theatre. The streets here are so clean, they're spotless, there's no litter and we've seen people picking up cans and bottles and we think there may be an incentive for them which is absolutely fantastic. The other thing we've noticed is the art on the walls and there's also encouragement for people to paint great pictures on the walls here. The cafe culture here reminds us of Stavanger and other Norwegian towns we've visited, you know, full of cushions and books and they don't hurry you out. We know that many of you start to learn the ukulele on the cruise and if you do, you can now progress to the world of instruments, see what's inside. The sitar may be too much of a jump. The Icelandic people are keen gardeners and you can see some very unusual gardens. Rainbow roads are very popular in Iceland. They paint them everywhere and they move around. We're definitely heading somewhere. First stop is more than just a church because we'll show you a couple of other things in the area. Halgren's Church is the largest church in Iceland. It was built between 1945 and 1986. It has a 75 metre high tower and you can buy tickets and go up there in an elevator. and it has a great pipe organ. These bells are from a church in Grimsey that burnt down in 2021. They're raising money to construct a new church and then these bells will go back in their rightful place. In front of the church is a statue of Leif Eriksson, son of Iceland, discoverer of Finland. We're in the neighborhood of the gods. There's 15 streets and they all carry the names of gods from Norse mythology. You'll know them if you watch the Vikings. And there's also a cafe called Loki. We call this Gary's Cafe. Not a lot of people know this, but Gary, Manuel Martinez, has also a pseudonym of Loki. Opposite the church is the Einar Johnson Museum. He was a famous sculptor. And the entrance is 1500 and there is a discount for seniors. He's done a lot of statues around Iceland, including the Leif Eriksson one just outside the church. We're going to walk to the Perlan Museum. Follow me. 
Google Maps says walk through the tunnel. I chose the wrong one first. This is the right one, straight on. When you're through the tunnel, turn left and walk over the bridge. You can see how far I've come from the church. Not far and 13 minutes to go. The path brings you out here, right by the museum. We've arrived at the Perlan Museum. Google Maps took us a good way round, so we're going in to see the wonders of Iceland. It's an observatory and from the top you've got a 360 degree view. This section is called the wonders of Iceland. It's a show showing you them in their natural habitat. They're black-legged kittiwakes. So it's a really cool interactive screens. Whatever you touch, they show you. There's a short film to prepare you for entering the ice caves. It can be slippery in the ice cave, so watch your step. So this is the ice caves. It's cold in here, so make sure you've got your coat. Oh, oh it's very cold on the bottom. An ice throne. You may find there's too much to do in Reykjavik, so you don't get the time to visit the Blue Lagoon. All is not lost. There is a forest lagoon in Akureyri and a complimentary bus. Watch our film on Akureyri. The story goes that when Iceland became a Christian country, the head of the country came here and threw his Norse gods over into the waterfall. And that's why the waterfall is called the Waterfall of the Gods. It looks really deep down there, but it's really a mirror. I'm out of the ice caves, up the stairs. There are over 400 glaciers in Iceland. Wow. Don't forget to visit the planetarium, where they show you the wonders of the northern light. He's a big one, isn't he? We've got one like this in our fish tank. Up to the observation deck. And you get a 360 degree view of the city and there are signs to tell you what you're looking at. There's the church we walk from and there are the cruise ships over there. This is the side for watching sunsets. There are wonderful aromas as you walk through the gift shop and above it is the cafe restaurant. If you come to this museum, especially with children, it's a great learning place. It explains everything from the history of glaciers to organisms in a really cool and interesting way. So the smart bus picks you up from the bus stop, then you come to a main bus station and then you transfer onto a white blue lagoon bus and it takes about 45 minutes to get here. And when you get here they kick you out with your wristband etc. And off you go. So we've arrived at the blue lagoon and we're going to see what it's all about. So we're in the Blue Lagoon, it's 10 past 8 at night, it's really cold outside but the water is just like a lovely hot bath, it's quite incredible here. You can smell the sulphur actually. So when we got off the bus, 
it started to rain and it was windy and it was really cold and I am a chilly mortal. So I thought this would be horrible and I've made a terrible mistake. But actually, you come in, they give you a wristband, you just quickly get changed. You come out here and it is just glorious. It's so warm in here. And the water is supposed to be healthy and you feel healthy in here. So the Blue Lagoon is one of the 25 wonders of the world. Oh, this is a really warm bit here. I'm just queuing up to get my mouth masked. So your package is including one mask, yeah. which is a silicon one. Thank for you. Your, please take care of your skin. You live it over ten minutes. Yeah. No eyes, and you're in the water. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, please. So you won't recognise me. I've got to put this on for ten minutes, and I'm going to look so much younger. You have to avoid your eye area. <laughs> I'm not worried about your eyes, just avoid my microphone. It's quite, a lot. <laughs> it's quite a lot that they give you. I'm trying to persuade Stuart to have someone, but he won't. I'm busy working. I'm working. <laughs> They've got all these little pools you can go in. I wonder if it's different temperature. Keep the microphone out of the water. I think it makes it extra special when the weather's rotten because if it was sunny and hot, it wouldn't be special like this. It's like just amazing to be out here in the horrible rain and mist and yet it's, you're just warm and cosy. And I'm heading to the bar, which will make me feel even better. A sparkling wine, please. The other what do you want, Stuart? Beer. Oh my god, it's ill. Would you like, sir? A beer, please. Thank you, oh, thank you very much. Beer. Isn't it nice? Uh, note to self always put strawberry syrup in the <laughs> Yeah. Is it coming off? Yeah, it's perfect. You look so much younger, G. <laughs> Looks like an old video from about 2005. Yeah. It's the life. Raining again. Yep. Yeah, rain on my camera now. Oh. Uh, in the summer, this is open till midnight. They think of everything here. They even give you a plastic bag to put your wet costume in. And I have to tell you, at no time during this whole experience did I think of the cost. You can get a bus here from the airport and you can store your luggage. The fish that people are tasting is dried haddock and they've got some schnapps to help it down. If you're looking for the microbrewery, look for the kegs. I think that might be a clue. The story goes that when Iceland became a Christian country, the head of the country came here and threw his Norse gods over into the waterfall and that's why the waterfall is called the waterfall of the gods.